Shalom, I'm John Carney Roth, and welcome to another edition of Something to Think About. This is episode number two, and in contemplating what this particular episode was going to be about, I felt very led to continue on with the same concept as one episode number one, which is about taking authority over unclean spirits with people that are in your life that are giving you a difficult time. Now, this is going to be a, a kind of a, a very different perspective on this because on this one, this is about a little story that I'm going to tell about a person that I knew who was in our faith, and um, he chose not to um, not to learn about spiritual warfare, and so. The title of this today is Choosing the Lake of Fire and the Second Death Through Willful Ignorance. Choosing the Lake of Fire and the Second Death Through Willful Ignorance. I'm not going to get into the theology of that title, but this title really is more about what is the consequences for choosing not to understand how the devil works in your life. We're told in Scripture from Yahshua not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. And yet this, this, this fellow that I knew, he chose through ignorance to not understand Satan's devices. And as you'll learn in this story, I'm going to tell just for a couple of minutes here, you'll learn uh, what the consequences for that was. And I'm hoping that through this, you'll be able to see in your life that you don't want to fall into this category. Because ultimately, the devil's going to run roughshod all over you. He's going to take complete advantage of you. And you're going to be in a complete state of confusion and disillusionment in trying to walk in this faith. You'll be no match for the unclean spirits that are assigned to you to take you out of this faith and to send you to the lake of fire and the second death, which is the, the, the third resurrection. But like I said, I'm not going to get into theology today. That's not what this is about. This is more about waking up. We're coming to a time now where unclean spirits are being unleashed on the earth and they're going through the nations and they're turning nations upside down, societies upside down, political systems upside down, and ultimately individual lives upside down. And unless we as the body of Messiah wake up and start to really understand these dynamics of what's really going on in the spirit realm, which we don't see, but we need to be able to see, we're going to be in for a whole lot of a mess. And so I want to tell a little bit of a story about a friend of mine who was in our faith, in our fellowship, and uh, he's married and he had some children. And one day I sat with him and I said to him, listen, I said, you know, we need to talk about spiritual warfare. And he says, oh, I don't want to really know anything about that. I go, well, why not? And he says, well, I don't know anything about it. It's very complicated from what I understand, and it requires a lot of energy to do all that. I said, well, you understand that if you choose not to um, understand this, that there are consequences for that. Basically, in essence, if we as individuals choose not to understand spiritual warfare and how to deal with unclean spirits, we're basically giving a license to the enemy to just come into our life and just wreak havoc. Now, you know, either way, you're going to have trials in this life. You can either go through the trials in victory in honoring the Messiah who works you through those trials to perfect you and make you better, make your faith stronger, or you can shame him by just turning your head the other way and pretending this doesn't exist and that there's some other explanation for why these things happen to me. But ultimately, your goose is going to get cooked. And that's what happened to this poor fellow. So what happened was, I'm going to make a, a very long story very short, but what basically happened was another man came into the fellowship who is adopting Talmudic philosophy, which is the covenant of Hagar, which Paul talks about. And Paul also talks about coming to the third level of the faith. And the third level, some of you may not have heard of this, but the third level of the faith is the ultimate level of the faith, which is the all wisdom and spiritual understanding. In other words, you transcend this natural realm in which we exist, and we're able to tap into the spirit realm where Yahweh and Yahshua will reveal to us the secrets of what the enemy is doing behind the scenes so that we may be able to destroy the works of the devil as... Um, as um, as Yahshua did to him himself. And so um, 
So what happened was this man came in and began to influence this friend of mine, unbeknownst to me at the time. And little by little, I started to figure out something was not right because the demeanor and the spirit of my friend was beginning to change. And I realized that his heart and his spirit had gone somewhere else. So I knew something was going on. So what happened was he began to influence him in this and he'd be able to go over his house secretly. You know, when you got to do stuff secretly, there's something very wrong about your motives. It means you've got something that you want to hide. And that there is another legal reason why the devil will take advantage of you because he's already got you on the run now. And you're now trying to conceal everything that you're doing. This is not a practice you want to indulge in in front of the Messiah because he sees everything you're doing, even though the other human beings around you don't see it. But there are some who do pick up on it because they have the spirit of discernment. And so what happened was eventually those two had a falling out with each other. And that man wound up throwing my friend under the bus. But he was in too deep at this point. And if you're in too deep, you better start getting out before it, it's too late. So what happened was over a period of more time, my friend began to indulge in Talmudic philosophy, he started buying all kinds of Jewish um, writings like the Talmud, the Mishnah, and was studying into all this stuff until finally one day, it finally got to a point where we're in our fellowship, I was giving a message, and then afterwards we were having a discussion, and what happened was him and his wife began to attack me using the Talmud, Okay. That's the covenant of Hagar, which Paul talked about. And so when they started attacking me, then Yahweh said to me, he says, these people no longer have any respect for you. And they don't want to hear your messages anymore. They, they've already made a decision as to what they're going to do. Well, I want to read to you a translation that I, I have done in Colossians chapter 2. I think it's very important that we go through this. And I'm going to read this. So if you want, just follow along with me. It's in Colossians chapter 2, verse 1 through 9. It says, For I want you to know what a great conflict and anxiety and contention I have for you and those in Laodicea, for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts, where their thoughts and feelings reside, may be encouraged, being knit through the unifying together in love and, in, and attaining to all the riches in its fullness and valuable bestowment of the full assurance with the full confidence of understanding a full mental intelligence. This is what Shaul is saying to the knowledge, discerning recognition of the full discernment of the mystery of silence for those not initiated into religious rites of Yahweh, both of the father and the Messiah. So what he's saying is this understanding, this all wisdom and spiritual understanding, as he talks about in other places, is reserved strictly for those in the body of Messiah who are exercising their thoughts and their intentions and their faith to this level where you get this full discerning of what's going on. This, brethren, is where we have got to get to. It's not going to get any easier out there. So we need to take to heart these lessons and things that we see that happen to people around us that the fear of Yahweh might be in us. And it's those who keep the commandments of Yahweh have the fear of Yahweh and nothing shall offend them. But these people, they get offended because they're not really staying in the faith. So let's move on to verse 3. In whom are hidden as to be kept secret all the treasures a deposit of wealth of wisdom from a higher spiritual source and knowledge. A higher spiritual source and knowledge. Now this I say, lest anyone should deceive and delude you with persuasive, which is enticing words. This is exactly what happened to my friend. He got enticed away from Yahshua and that faith over into Talmudic Judaism. And so ultimately what happened to him was he not only got taken out of the faith, he lost his wife, he lost his children, he lost everything. And to this day, a few years later, he's still sitting there believing that he made the right decision. Meanwhile, you know, all these other catastrophic things that have happened to his life has not made him to repent. And this is the dangerous part because as we know in Hebrews chapter 6, 
it says if you've tasted of the, the heavenly gift and if you die in that state where you did not where you fell away from the faith there's just reserved for you the lake of fire where you'll be burned and there'll be no resurrection from that um and so that's your eternal destination thus the the title of this message that i gave earlier about the lake of fire and choosing ig and using ignorance to get yourself there and the second death this is not something brethren that we should be playing with because that in itself is fire so let's move on here it says for though i am absent in the flesh yet i am with you in the spirit rejoicing to see your good order of dignified character at this time and the steadfastness established stability of your faith in messiah this man had lost that you don't want to lose this brethren you want to hold on to this with all you can as it says earlier that this is a treasure and when you find that treasure you need to hold on to it guard it and protect it from everything possible including the devil himself for uh, let's see in verse 6 as you were there have received the Messiah Yahshua the master uh, by showing we have the capacity to be able to function in him this man was not able to function in him and furthermore he rejected the idea that I would even tell him that he needs to learn how to function in the Messiah well if you're not gonna do that then why would you come to this faith in the first place so there's a lot of contradictions in the mind that goes on with people uh, when they're faced with these things in verse 7 rooted to the point of stability and established through being confirmed in the faith as you have been taught abounding in it with thanksgiving with grateful language towards Yahweh okay so now listen to this beware with perception lest anyone cheat as misleading you away as booty by seduction of you through philosophy which is in this case specifically in the Greek Jewish sophistry this is what happened to this man he was led away by Jewish sophistry which is a clever but misleading reasoning that comes from a love of wise things Kabbalah I mean we got so many people are bringing Kabbalah into the faith now this is oxymoronic the two are not compatible at all but this is where it had taken him and his family and ultimately destroyed him and now he's in danger of the judgment and I don't say this is condemnational if he does happen to listen to this message I hope it pricks him to re-examine his situation that he may be able to repent and come back and maybe somehow Yahweh can restore his family and his children and so forth but a lot of damage has been done and it's very difficult to undo it but with Yahweh and Yahshua all things are possible amen so let's continue on an empty deceit that uses cheating to delude according to the tradition that puts uh, men into prison which using Jewish Talmudic law of men now this is in the Greek brethren read your Bibles un unveil the Greek and what it's really saying using Jewish Talmudic law of men according to the basic principles which is an orderly arrangement according to the world not according to Yahweh so we should not be seeking this higher wisdom of men we should be seeking the higher wisdom of Yahweh and Yahshua himself of the world and not according to the Messiah as it states here for in a state of rest in him to house permanently all the fullness with completeness of Elohim head and its divinity bodily so we've got the two different worlds here we've got the worldly wisdom of the men who use trickery to capture you and bring you into these other ideologies which has nothing to do with the Messiah whatsoever you have no protection from the devil in these other ideologies whatsoever and so it's important that you get this wisdom that's kept inside of you endorsed by the faith if you continue to walk in the faith where you are protected from these things and Yahweh and Yahshua will reveal to you what the devil is doing behind the scenes I think maybe in the next one um, in the next episode I'm gonna continue on with the the first one that I did because that story continues on and it's getting kind of interesting but I'll make that decision later on but for now what I want to say to you brethren is this friend of mine this poor friend of mine who I feel very bad for he has made a decision that was grave a very grave decision he decided he wanted to indulge in something else 
and he wanted to substitute that, or he thought in his mind he could integrate the two of them together. And he tried to live it that way for a few years until ultimately the devil had his final say and wound up splitting his family, split his faith, and everything was turned upside down. And he's out of the faith now, and he's in danger of the lake of fire and the second death. Brethren, I'm asking you to please consider what I have just said and the scriptures that I have just said. This subject is very, very important. We can't play with the devil like this. We're given an outline of scripture, as I've just read today, what you don't want to be playing with. You're playing with fire if you're doing these things. Come out of the Babylonian system and refine your walk into Yahshua only. I, you know, I like to tell people, stick to the trunk of the tree. Man, for 40 years now, I've just watched people, they go out to the ends of the branches of the tree. And what happens is those branches cannot sustain their weight. And those branches snap off and those people fall to the ground and they break their necks, spiritually speaking, and they're gone. I've known hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and many hundreds of people that I've watched over the years, they're gone. And I don't even remember that even one of them I've ever seen come back to the faith. Brethren, this is a dangerous game that we're playing. Please, don't play with the lake of fire. Don't play with the second death. Please consider what I have said today and examine yourselves to see if you're really in the faith or if you're not substituted for something else. So with that, I hope that I've given you something to think about. Until next time, Shalom.